Yo, how's it going guys? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to set up your Facebook columns for an e-commerce brand so you can track your purchases and everything throughout the funnel so that you can properly optimize your accounts, see what's working, see what's not, and get the best possible results with Facebook ads. So let's go ahead and jump in and let me show you exactly how to set this up from A to Z. I'm also gonna provide you with an exact document in the description where you can go ahead and have this on file so that you can set up your columns um, extremely quickly um, and repeatably. So let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so I'm in one of my client's ad accounts here. And as you can see, this is the default view that Facebook gives you. Not a lot of information and it's you know just kind of showing the bare minimum here. So we have our uh, campaign names, the delivery, uh, the bid strategy, the budgets, um, our attribution settings here, and you can actually you know uh, expand the columns here um, just to get kind of like the full insights if it cuts things off. Um, it shows us the results here, which if we're optimizing for purchases, in this case for e-commerce, which is what I'm gonna show you the column setup for today, a D2C brand e-commerce where you're optimizing for purchases um, or in e-learning, whatever it is, like e-commerce in general. It does show you the results here when you are optimizing for purchases. And it also shows you, you know, your add to carts, your checkouts initiated, and some other conversion events that you have. But it doesn't like give you, you know, drilling down into those metrics and like what the cost per add to cart is, what the cost per purchase is, or, or sorry, the cost per, you know, initiate checkout, for example, right? Uh, it does give us the cost per result though, as far as cost per purchase here. And then it gives us a little bit of insights about the reach and the impressions. But again, if you are familiar with Facebook ads at all, you know that there is a ton of more insights and data that is super useful to optimize around. And so I'm gonna show you the exact column setup now. Um, so this is the, the column setup document here. So I'm gonna leave a link to this in the description so you can access this for yourself and bookmark it and have it on file. But this gives you literally everything that you're gonna need to understand the Facebook ad accounts throughout the funnel, right? So from all the way, you know, from impressions, uh, and the ad level all the way down to purchase. So you can identify where the funnel is breaking, where your ads are not converting or things are not measuring up to KPI and where you'd expect them to be to then address that problem to get the best results possible. So let's look over this here. And again, this is for e-commerce for purchases. So the column set up here, the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is name and then delivery budget, amount spent, CPM, reach, impressions, frequency, and then you're gonna look at the link clicks and then the link click-through rate, and then you're gonna look at the landing page views, add to carts, initiate checkouts, and purchases. So you can kind of see how it funnels and tapers down from the very top, right, with your name and your organization, right, and the delivery and the budgets, and then going into the reach, impressions, all the way to then the clicks, and then how many people of those clicks, um, you know, what was the click-through rate on that, and then the landing page views, and then add to carts, then initiate checkouts, then purchases, right? So all the way through, the funnel. So it kind of gives you a, a really good visual and a really good mental picture as you're looking in the ad account of how things are progressing uh, throughout. And we'll show you a live example of how to set this up and what this looks like in a live account. After that, we have looking at the metrics in terms of cost per, so cost per click, cost per landing page view, cost per add to cart, cost per initiate checkout and cost per purchase. And then we look at the purchase conversion value, the ROAS, we actually have some custom metrics here now. We have the average order value, which is super uh, valuable to understand. We have the conversion rates, we have the hook rates, we have the hold rate, which we'll get into what that is. And then we have quality engagement and conversion rate ranking on the actual ads themselves. So let's go ahead into the Facebook ad account and show you exactly how to set this up now. So back in the ad account here, what you're gonna to wanna to do is click on this column set up here, and then you're gonna to wanna to go click on customize columns, and it's gonna have all these default things. Now, what I like to do is actually just clear all of these out right out of the gate, and then I start to set this up from kind of a blank slate. So you're gonna have the campaign name here, that's always gonna be first, so you're just gonna leave that, and then you can start to add in each of these one by one. So first we have the delivery and budget, and then the amount spent. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab those. So you can literally just type in here, delivery, budget, amount spent. Awesome. Let's keep going here. Then we have CPM reach impressions. So again, same thing, CPM reach impressions. Then we have frequency link clicks CTR. So frequency link clicks CTR. Make sure you click CTR link click through rate. You don't want CTR all because this would include people that click anything on your ad, right? They can click to your Instagram page, your Facebook page. There's a lot of different links they can click. This one, we don't want just people that click your ad. Um, and clicked on the actual link to your website, which is kind of the most important thing. So we're gonna click on CTR link click through rate. Then we have landing page views, add to carts, issue checkouts. So let's go ahead and grab that. Landing page views. You're gonna wanna click on total here. And then um, we have add to carts as well. Click on total. You'll notice for things that are on the website, you'll get a few different metrics here. So you'll have website add to carts, meta add to carts. If you use the meta platform, 
to have a checkout process where they don't have to leave Facebook, then you might wanna you know, look at these. But I typically just put all, and then I'll just turn off these other things here. So we'll also do initiate checkout, and then again, you, you'll wanna just turn those other things off because if you click all, there'll be three separate things here if you have both of these checked, showing all and then separating it out into website and meta. So uh, add to carts, initiate checkouts, purchases, again, deselect these. And then we have the cost per. So we have cost per link click. And then we can just go, again, same thing, landing page view, cost, add to cart, cost, initiate checkout, click on cost, purchases, click on cost. Then you also wanna click on value here to get purchase conversion value, deselect these. And then you wanna click on ROAS and add that in as well, deselect website purchase ROAS and that'll just show you your overall ROAS there. So that is pretty much the setup of the funnel. Now there's a couple custom metrics that we have here as far as AOV, conversion rate, hook rate, and then hold rate. So first of all, AOV, how do we set that up? What you're gonna wanna do is actually go here and create, and create custom metric, and then you're gonna wanna name this uh, average order value, right? Or just AOV, okay? And then to get this metric, what you're actually gonna wanna do is just search for purchase, conversion value and add that in. And then you're gonna to wanna to divide that by the total number of purchases. So there you go, purchases. And what I would do is actually, you can expand this to open this to everyone with access to this in the business so that everybody can essentially see this value. And then I would just go click create metric. Now I already have this set up. So um, this is already here where you can see purchase conversion value divided by purchases is how we get that metric. So you're gonna to wanna to add that in next. Then we have conversion rate. How you would get that is you can go same thing, go conversion rate. And then you're gonna to want to add in the formula right here, which is purchases divided by a landing page views. So again, just search here, purchases divided by landing page views, and then go create metric. Again, we already have that here, so I'm just gonna click this. And you can see, right, the, the formula for that is purchases divided by landing page views. Pretty simple there. Next, we have uh, hook rate, and then we have hold rate. So how do we go about that? Hook rate is three second video views divided by impressions. And what that essentially means is your hook rate is how many people who are seeing your ad, who are you know essentially like having an impression of your ad, how many of them are watching the first three seconds of your video if you have a video ad. We recommend video ads, you, they give you the most data and allow you kind of like the best process to iterate and improve from and they typically just perform better overall. So it gives you a good idea if you are running video ads as far as uh, what percentage of them are hooking well and then what percentage of them are actually holding that traffic and that attention once you hook them in. So both hook and hold rate are very important to understand your video metrics and good things to improve upon to try to increase your hook rate and increase your hold rate. You're gonna see better results overall. So again, for hook rate, we'll set this up here, create a custom metric, right? Just title that hook rate, three second video plays and then divided by impressions. Right, and then you're gonna wanna create that metric. Again, we already have that here, so I'm just gonna go hook rate. Again, you can see three second video plays divided by impressions. And lastly, we're gonna create that hold rate, which is through plays divided again by impressions. Right, through plays divided by impressions. Pretty simple there. Again, we already have that, so I'm just gonna add that in there. And you can see it's the same thing. Through plays divided by impressions. So. Uh, after that, what you can now do is just search ranking here and then you wanna add these three three things in. These essentially measure the quality of your ad overall. As you can see here, ad relevance diagnostics. So this essentially rates your quality of your ad against all the other ads that you're also bidding and competing against. Uh, this measures the engagement of your ad, again, in competition with all the other ads that it's competing against. This measures things like uh, clicks, likes, comments, shares, uh, against, again, all the other ads that you're competing against. And the conversion rate, again, a measure of your ads expected conversion rate ranked against other ads that you're, with your same performance goals for the same audience. So again, just a really good way to actually evaluate the competition overall and how your ads are essentially stacking up. Uh, and again, the quality ranking is measured by using feedback on your ads and the post-click experience. So this one has a lot to do with, um, you know, your, your actual landing page itself and your brand experience overall against the competition. So uh, just add all these in. There's no particular order you need to add them in, but you know, just add it like that. And then what you're gonna wanna do is just save this as a preset. I typically just name this uh, like our agency. So Jetstream, right, digital, but you can do, you know, e-commerce here, uh, whatever the name you wanna do, and then just click apply. Boom, so now you can see we have a completely different view of the Facebook ad account. We can see so much more insights into what's working and what's not. 
Um, and let's go through that right now. So you can see again, we have the campaigns here. We can see the amount spent. We can get a visualization of our CPM here and how that you know is, is in comparison to some other campaigns that we've had. We can see the reach. We can see our impressions, our frequency, our link clicks, our link click through rate, which is a super important metric to track and keep an eye on. How many page views we have, how many add to carts we have, checkouts, purchases, and then we can see the cost per rate. Cost per, and again, it's like that funnel, right? So we're funneling down, we're seeing how everything is kind of progressing in real time throughout the funnel. Then we can see our landing page views, our cost per add to cart, our cost per checkout initiated, and our cost per purchase here. And then we can actually see the purchase conversion value totals, the ROAS, our average order value, our actual conversion rate for each of these ads, as you can see here, remarketing or prospecting is you know just under 5% and remarketing is about 28%, so a pretty dramatic difference there. Same thing with the ROAS. And then you can see our hook rate is about 26% and our hold rate or our hook rate on the remarketing is, is not quite as good, but our hook rate on the prospecting ads are quite good at 26%, hold rate at about 8.9%. And for remarketing, uh, again, we don't really run video ads um, on remarketing. That's why these metrics are so low, but we do track these, especially on prospecting, very, very important. And then we can actually go down to the ad level as well. Let's just go check out this one. And then we can see how our ads are actually ranking here, right? So we can see as far as quality goes, again, this has to do with like our overall experience of our brand and the post-click experience, things like that. We are ranking in the below 35% of ads. So that's definitely an area of improvement to work on, but we can see our engagement rate is above average. We're getting a lot of people engaging with our ads, um, which is great to see. And our conversion rate is about average. If you see all of these metrics as above average, typically you're gonna have a really good ad. That's an ad that's scalable. You should be getting a higher ROAS with that and doing really good overall. So this is a great thing to take a look at and evaluate your metrics overall. And then again, you can drill down to the actual ad level and do the same thing, right? You can see which of these ads are actually performing the best and getting a you know high click-through rate. As you can see, this one is getting the highest click-through rate, which is why most of the spend is there. And then you can see how many purchases each of these ads have. What is the cost per click? What is the cost per purchase on some of these? What is the ROAS, right? What's the conversion rate? What is that, uh, again, hook rate? What is that hold rate? And how does everything, you know, fare against one another, right? And then you can do that same thing at the ad set level too. Look at all of these metrics and it gives you a really good full picture for how to optimize your accounts around ROAS and around, um, you know, your click-through rates and your overall ad quality. Again, you wanna keep in mind, what are the things that you can control in the ad accounts? And it's pretty much just the ads. So that's why you wanna optimize around, you know, what your ads are doing. Obviously the downstream metrics and your lagging indicators of like cost for purchase, but the leading metrics being, you know, what is that click through rate? How are, is your audience reacting to it? What's the cost per click? Is it, is it reasonable? And this is probably the biggest metric that we take a look at and what evaluates the quality is like, are we getting a high CTR for the audience that we're targeting? And is that cost per click reasonable? And then downstream, you should see all the other metrics perform well as well. But that is the entire uh, Facebook ad column setup for e-commerce. Hopefully you found that very, very valuable. Definitely go ahead and jump into your account, implement this right away, save this, bookmark that uh, document, and you should have no problem you know, evaluating uh, the data in your Facebook ad account going forward. Okay, thanks for watching. Hopefully you found that valuable. Go ahead and set up those columns in your Facebook ad account and you're gonna see a ton of more success overall. Now, if you're new around here, my name is Blake Bauer and I'm the co-founder at a advertising agency called Jetstream Digital. So if you want help growing and scaling with Facebook ads, Google ads, and other ad platforms overall for an e-commerce or e-learning brand, right? Feel free to click the links in the description and you can find more information for how to apply to work with myself and my team. Thanks so much for watching the video. Make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of the latest content in digital marketing and digital advertising. And yeah, thank you so much for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.